We hear a lot about drones these days and uh, one of the things you're not allowed to do is fly over 120 metres. Uh, that's just not allowed. And so for, for doing this sort of stuff, if you're going to go over that height, you need to have a special, special permission and uh, fortunately Tripoli organised that for us. Um, now, just to bring this back to the workshop we're doing in December, you'll notice there's a halfway during the flight, uh, the parachute was deployed and then landed, the rocket separated and landed safely. So with this workshop we're also showing you how to use the telemetry to determine where you are on the flight and then to release a rocket, uh, parachute all going well. Um, unlike most uh, rockets, my, my rocket had documentation on, on it about what to do, which was basically one word, duck. <laughs> okay. So um, the, the, the experts have much larger rockets. This is a class I, and I really like this one because they actually put like, met, like it's like metal filings or something in the exhort, in the um, in the actual rocket motor. So you can see there's these sparkles coming off the rocket as it's about to take off. And it's a beautiful green and dotted pattern. And then as it launches, you can, I don't know if you can see it as well as I can, but there's sparkles in the tra vapor trail. It's just am amazing. And uh, I'll just show you one one more launch. This is a pretty impressive live one. So um, yeah, it was, a, it was a fun day. So we won't be going going to, going to quite those heights, but um, I think we've uh, hopefully we'll use that experience to uh, give you a good a good show on the day. So uh, Andrew Fisher, he's um, and also Nick, who will be up in a few minutes, uh, has been working pretty hard to build a, a water propulsion system for a, a Coke bottle. So we're going to get two litre Coke bottles. We're going to fill them with water, attach them to this rig. So you can see on the left hand side that's the. Uh, the, uh, the main pipe that will get pressurised to perhaps up to 100, 100 psi. So what are we aiming for, Nick? About 100, yes. Yeah. So we'll see how we go with 100 psi. And then that, that injects the, uh, that, that holds the, uh, the uh, compressed air and then you pull on the orange tag. The, uh, the Coke bottle will be sitting on top. There's a black parachute over it and off it goes. And uh, that's a closer view of the mechanism. So you can see the, the rockets uh, filled up with water and it's ready, ready for launch. And uh, so last Sunday afternoon, Andrew, um, did a uh, preparatory launch, so this is what it's going to look like. Research centre. <laughs> yeah, you guys didn't know you were funding a research centre, did you? Okay, so this is just down St Kilda. I think, it was about, I think it was only about 30 or 40 metres, so that's uh, all Andrew's work. This, this is awesome. I just get to sit up here with a microphone and uh, someone else did all the work. Um, so that was uh, just a flight of the Coke bottle, and uh, what we'll also be doing is uh, adding the telemetry to that. There'll be a little, it's an ESP32 micro processor running, running micro Python, so some would say that's probably the best thing you can do to Python is put it into orbit, but <laughs> not, not, looking, not, looking, not looking at anyone. <laughs> all right. But you were told from that video that was there, we will also bring some drones along. So we'll try and get some uh, video of your footage from, from height. And uh, on the, at the beginning, first slide, there was three things, and you know, two out of those three can actually fly. Let me show you this. We, we also did this at the same conference. Still working on the pigs. Very nervous cameraman. Lana Brindley, who's a, a great, ha great hacker who um, helps organise all the Alliance conferences, I think she, they had a whole of these pink unicorns. I think it's unicorns is a challenge of it, sort of thrown down to his like, yeah, yeah, you think you're good with drones, well, make this fly. So, well, we accepted the challenge. Yeah. But more seriously, we'll bring along some uh, really nice professional drones and uh, allow the, you know, everyone, kids especially, have a bit of a fly, take some video of their footage. So, hopefully, that'll be a bit of fun. Okay, so now I'm going to hand over to uh, Doctor. Dr. Nick, so everyone say hello, hello, Dr. Nick. And he goes, Hi, Dr. Nick. Yeah, <laughs> Simpsons watchers, great. He's our director of uh, avionics research. So, so this is news to Ben and Rick, who didn't realise they had a, a uh, avionics research director on their salary. But here we go. <laughs> All right. Good evening, everyone. We look forward to getting the invoice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, as Andy just mentioned, these uh, rockets are flying with uh, air over water. So, um, really all they are is a Coke bottle full of water and the compressed air drives the water out and when the water is driven downwards out, that drives the rocket up. And that's really cool. Um, 
there's a lot of things you can change with that. You can put bigger fins or smaller fins, you can put more pressure or less pressure, you can put more water or less water, maybe even change the, the shape of the bottleneck, things like that. But while you're standing on the ground, looking up into the sky, going, where the hell did it go? It's a very hard time to work out whether what you did made any difference, right? So we we're interested in doing some telemetry. Now, we saw the telemetry devices before um, were quite bulky and needed some sort of extra bits and pieces and all that. These days, el <laughs> electronics have gotten a little smaller, which is the way of these things. Now, I don't actually have a launch tube like that one that, that Andrew made, so I had to make the next best thing, which is, of course, a tennis ball and some cardboard and some sticky tape, because we're really scientific at the BuzzConf Institute of Science. Um, so this is my little telemetry rig. So basically, take it, throw it in the air. You can see a few interesting things already, one of which is that the fins very much make it go up, turn over, drop down. We're, we're hoping the rocket will do that too. So hidden away in the tennis ball is, hang on a sec. What is it? Is it, is it chocolate? Is it, is it a little man? There you go. Hidden away in the in the tennis ball there is our telemetry package. That's a little ESP32 microcontroller, a little tiny gyrometer and a accelerometer, um, and the whole thing talks Wi-Fi back down to the ground. So the idea is, as the thing is flying, we'll be streaming data live from it to tell us its acceleration upwards. We should be able to see the as the water comes out. We should see the thrust upwards as the water runs out. That will reduce. We'll see it sort of coast to a halt with just air resistance. Be effectively weightless at the very top there, zero gravity, and then start to, to flip over and then start to feel the air resistance as it drops. We should even see if they go high enough, we should see like a terminal velocity. We should see the point where the air resistance equals gravity and the velocity stays the same as it, it goes down. If the parachute doesn't deploy, that will be a rather larger number than if it does, but that's science. That's what makes it all fun. It has the Wi-Fi connection the whole time. We are hoping it will have the Wi-Fi connection the whole time. Uh, these things can run a uh, lower bitrate, higher distance version of 802.11 that should hopefully let us talk over a couple of hundred metres of clear air. We'll find out. Otherwise, it'll buffer packets until it gets back down low enough. But either way, as by the time the thing hits the ground, we should have a nice little graph, and so we can grab our little pointy knives and cut the fins a bit smaller or make bigger fins or experiment a little bit. And so I think it'll be a really fun exercise in like working out how do you make one of these rockets? How do you make it fly well? Um, yeah. I reckon if we ask the right people, <laughs> we might be able to make some 3D printed nose cones or tail fins and or tail fins, things like that. We have to work on the design for that just a little bit, but um, I reckon that'd be really great to get going because there's lots of different ways you can make the fins. You saw on that rocket had three fins in like a little triangle. There's also ones with just sticky outy fins like the cardboard ones that you glue on. There's lots of ways we could do this, so I think it'll be really fun to experiment with that. The best thing about it is the rockets are really light. They're just Coke bottles full of air and water, so if they fall on you, they probably won't hurt very much. And the great thing about BuzzConf is we've got enough room to actually do this sort of stuff safely while pointing it away from everybody else, which is, is gives us an opportunity to try this sort of stuff in the field, which is not something you get to do at many conference centres, or at least not something you get to do at many conference centres twice. Anyway, <laughs> so um, uh, thanks all for coming along. Um, did anyone else have questions up the back there uh, about what we're doing and why we're doing it and why you should care? No? Cool. All right. Um, well, uh, Andy's got more to say. Thanks. Thank you, yeah, well, thanks for coming along. Uh, Andrew Fisher, myself, and I think Nick, is this your third BuzzConf? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so we've, uh, it's been quite a privilege to um, uh, be invited by Rick and Ben to, um, to run these workshops. So we've really enjoyed them. So we, yeah, we hope you all come along and uh, enthuse you to come and fly rockets with us. So a couple of months back, um, the guys allowed me to uh, talk a little about this uh, autonomous vehicle workshop that we've been gradually working towards. And so, um, how, how much time have we got, uh, Ben? Ten. Okay. Well, I've got to fill ten minutes. So, if anyone has any questions about rockets, or as we go to the cars, please just stick your hand up. Happy to ask questions. Much rather hear, what, uh, hear from from you guys rather than just rabbit on about stuff. Anyway, so AI and machine learning. We uh, we hear hear a lot about it in the press, on the news, and so on. Mostly from people who don't know what they're talking about. 
and, uh, and it's, it's a really important subject so it's going to affect society for the next uh, couple of decades and unfortunately there's a lot of old white guys like me I'm not that old but maybe I am um, who are doing this because it's exciting stuff and we started with microprocessors back in the 70s so it was a great great time and um, but really diversity is really important and we need to make sure that um, all members of society have an understanding of, of AI machine learning and many other things so they can help make decisions around this because we, we I think the evidence is fairly clear we can't trust our politicians and and sometimes even corporate to make good decisions on our behalf so anyway so we thought what, what could be a more fun way to get people into AI than having little cars I fired this up earlier and I very carefully stuck it somewhere so if it ran away, as autonomous vehicles sometimes may do, it, would not, it wouldn't hurt itself. So um, to make it accessible we've tried to use a very inexpensive platform, so tried to keep this under $250. Um, that gives you a, a fairly good uh, remote car platform with um, full independent steering and uh, so on. And uh, there's a little microcontroller in there that's got an accelerometer and barometer. This, this little microcontroller actually could fly a drone if it needed to, but we're just using it to, fly, to drive the car around. A battery, a uh, remote control receiver, and, that's, that's and a camera up the front. That's everything you need for an inexpensive autonomous vehicle.